very, very important title for anyone who is caring for God's sake. So, you see, I said these things to, to say that you don't need to be a pastor of a church to be a shepherd. Or you don't need to be the, 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 the leader of a home cell to be a shepherd. Once God's people have been given to you to care for, you are a shepherd. Now, anyone who is a shepherd must have three goals, three visions. You must aspire to be three things. And I have selected only one of the three. Next year, God willing, if we are alive and we are having this conference again, I may choose the other one. Or I may even repeat the same one I've chosen this year. Yes. But anybody who is a shepherd like me, like you, like the brother who is caring for the instrumentalists, you must have three goals. And you find those three goals in chapter 17 of this book. Now, the first goal, so I'm going to talk about just all the three goals in a few minutes and then select the first one. Select the one that is the theme. And then we are going to run with it this week. Is it a blessing? Is it a blessing? So the first one, which is very powerful, is that every shepherd, I hope by now you know who a shepherd is. All right. Every shepherd must desire to become a good shepherd. Good shepherd. Good shepherd. You must be good. You must be, it must be your vision to be a good shepherd. Because that is what Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 11. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And you are a good shepherd when your shepherding style is like that of Jesus. When the way you shepherd the people is like the way Jesus took care of the people God gave him. If your shepherding skills are like that of Jesus, then you are good. Then you are good. Which means that some people are bad shepherds. Bad shepherds. It's very likely that some of us here are bad shepherds. But by Friday, you would have experienced your conversion from a bad shepherd to a good shepherd. My sister, believe me, you have to be good. You have to be good. It must really concern you that you are not a good shepherd. You must open the Bible. Our standard is Jesus. He's our standard. So open the Bible and see how Jesus cared for people. And make sure that your shepherding skills are approximating those of Jesus. Maybe nobody has told you. Maybe you are online and you have never thought about it that you don't care whether you are good or you are not good. But remember that your final judgment will be determined by two words. Good and faithful. 
Well done. Thou good and faithful. These two words, <laughs> uh, I don't have a problem if you are not rich. I don't have a problem if you are not educated. I don't have a problem if you are too educated. I don't have a problem if you are a male. I don't have a problem if you are a female. But it must concern you. These two words, I tell you that if you are assessed and you are found not to be good, your end will not be a good end. And that end is a permanent end. It's not for 40 years or 400 years. So you must, you, you must ensure if you are a pastor that you are good. It concerns me whether I am good or I am not good. Don't just be there. Because the judgment on pastors who are not good is a very, very severe judgment. There are many vocations you can choose not to be good at it and just get by. About 80% of masons and artisans in certain parts of the world are not good. But they get jobs. They are building everywhere. They can build a wall. And the wall can be so crooked as if it has been designed. Like it's part of the architectural design for the wall to cheer. And when you say this, oh, Fanisa, Fanisa, Fanisa. Every way there, Fanisa. Where put it here? Mr. Ahin, the other day, Fanisa. And they get jobs every day. They are, they are working at sites everywhere. <laughs> a lot of drivers on the street of certain countries, about 90% of them are not good. In certain countries. Whose names begin with an alphabet. <laughs> They cannot even read road signs. Some don't even have a license. Those who have, I don't even know how they got the license. They drive on the road, they are drunk. And they are driving. <laughs> they can cross you anywhere, any day, any day. They can enter the road at any time. Very bad. But they have got so trust they are driving. <laughs> They've got buses they are driving. They've got taxis they are driving. They've got cars they are driving. So a lot of professions, it doesn't really matter whether you are good or bad. You can get by. You can get by. They are bad lawyers. Very bad lawyers who don't know their work, but they have jobs. At least they are on radios speaking as professionals. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, if you are a servant of God, you cannot afford to be anything else apart from being good at what God has called you to be. And how do we become good? You become good by making sure that the standard, which is Jesus, is how you are ministering, how you are shepherding. So a good shepherd, Christ said, I am the good shepherd. And even in this verse, he gives one of the many, many signs of a good shepherd. Giving your life. We'll come to all these things one day. You are a good shepherd when your pastoring style is like Christ's and your fruits are the same as his. That's the number two. Number one, 
is that when your shepherding style is like Christ, then the second one is when your pastoring style is like Christ and your fruits. Jesus began his ministry with some one, two, three, four people following him. Before we knew it, there were 12. He did ministry for just three and a half years. Three and a half. Unlike you who did ministry or you've done ministry for 15 years already. Yes. Many of us have done ministry for more than five years. Jesus never did ministry for five years. Never. It was three years and a half. You have done ministry for five years. Ten years. Ladies and gentlemen, in the three and a half years of Jesus Christ's ministry, we, we, we read words like multitudes followed him. That's Jesus. So we are talking about the fruits. You are good when your fruits are like Christ. I mean, there was a time he was having a meeting and the people were hungry. They couldn't count everybody. They only could count the men. You're not listening to me. Oh, I'm preaching to myself. I said, the people were so many that they couldn't count. It wasn't a healing service. They were just looking for people to feed. They counted only the men and they got 5,000 men. Only men. They didn't count the women and the children. And in any gathering, the women are more. So if the men were 5,000, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can do your arithmetic and find out how many women were there and for that matter, how many children and how many there were in all. I see your membership moving into thousands. Say Jesus. Jesus. His standards are, must be our standards. Oh, I forgot to tell you, this is 2,000 years ago. You can imagine the population of the world at that time. He was still counting thousands. You will do better. Amen. I said you will do better. Amen. He said, and greater works than these. Can you lift your right hand and say, I am a pastor of thousands. Say, I refuse hundreds. I reject tens. Say, I reject tens. I reject hundreds. Say, I am a pastor of thousands. I am a pastor of thousands. Clap your hands for Jesus. That is the results, the fruits. Oh, we have just received Bishop Ni Adedu. My co-host. My co-host. Clap your hands for him. You are going to hear him very soon. Keep clapping your hands. Please be seated. Say fruits. We are not doing ministry to match the ministry of Bishop Beckham. No. Okay. Bishop Ahin is not our target. Jesus, see, if you are good, you are good with respect to only Jesus. <laughs> only Jesus. Not reverend or say. Not Archbishop Matthew. And Jesus, I said, he didn't do ministry for even five years. Even five. Never on earth. And within the three and a half years, 
at least we read once that when he was feeding his members, there were more than 5,000. The men. You will do better. Whatever you need to be a pastor of thousands shall be delivered to you in this conference and you will not only be a hearer and a writer but you also be a doer somebody's being blessed somebody's being blessed a year by this time you'll be sharing testimonies of amazing things God has done in your ministry yeah Number two, every shepherd, so the first goal is to be a good shepherd. Ask your neighbor, are you trying to be a good shepherd? Ask your neighbor, is it on your mind to be a good shepherd? Is it on the person's mind? Well, if it was not, it must be now. Yes. Because the slaps you are going to get, if you are not a good pastor, <laughs> you, you can't handle the slaps. The next one is every shepherd. That's the next goal. The first goal is that you must be good. The next goal is that every shepherd must desire to become a great shepherd. Great shepherd. Say great shepherd. great shepherd. Say great shepherd. Great shepherd. Oh, I can't hear you. Say great shepherd. Great shepherd. Say I must be a great shepherd. Now Hebrews chapter thirteen, verse twenty. Hebrews thirteen, and verse number twenty. Now the God of peace. That brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus. That great shepherd of the sheep. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. So look at this. Look at it. Even to be a good shepherd, you must also aspire to be Great, because Jesus was referred to as the great shepherd. Now, who is a great shepherd? You are a great shepherd when you have gained much knowledge and skill of a shepherd. Yes. Say knowledge and skill. I can't hear you. Say knowledge and skill. Yes. That is a great shepherd. A great shepherd is a person who has knowledge and skill. There is what we call Shepherding skills. Pastoring skills. There's a skill to handling people. If people come to your church, first timers come to your church, new converts come to a church, somebody has been in your church, your member for 10 years, 5 years, there's a way to handle the 10 year old member. There's a way to handle the seven-year-old member. It will be different from the way you handle the new convert who came yesterday. It's a skill. 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 And many pastors don't have skills. Many pastors don't have skills. And that is what makes the difference between any two professionals, any two surgeons, 
any two drivers, any two plumbers, any two seamstresses, any two tailors, any two shoemakers, knowledge and skill. Say knowledge and skill. My dear friend, I want to tell you that the shepherding work is a professional work. Shepherding is a professional work. Somebody has given